Hey everybody, welcome to Human Factors Cast, episode 28. We got some exciting things today. We got a guest, we got some Human Factors news, some fun news and stuff, and uh, we're also going to be playing Human Factors 20 questions uh, for reasons that you'll find out in a bit. Human Factors Cast starts right now. to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome. Billy and Blake are out today, but I am joined by Woodrow Gustafson. How's it going, guys? Thanks there for he is. Back. There he is. You're welcome back anytime, buddy. Uh... This is this is Human Factors Cast. This is the show where we talk about all things human factors. It's uh, it's good to have you back, man. How you, how you been since the last time we uh, we kind of touched base? Good, good. It's been a busy time getting uh, you know in the process of buying a house and all this fun stuff. So just oh, been real busy. Yeah, really busy. But we're glad to have you back. Uh, our fans really like you. They they they're like, where's Woodrow? Bring him back. Oh come on now! Now you're just saying that. No, I can show you the emails. <laughs> I can show you the emails. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll see him. I'll hold you to it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into this human factors news. This is the part of the show all about human factors news. Now, this could be anything from virtual reality, automation, psychology, design, anything that has to do with the field of human with the field of human factors. So, up first today, I'm gonna I'm gonna be reading the news story since we don't have Billy or Blake here. Uh, up in the news here, let's see here, a computer interface that can decipher the thoughts of people who are unable to communicate could revolutionize the lives of those living with completely locked in syndrome, according to a new paper published in PLOS Biology. Woodrow, did you hear about the study and what do you think? Uh, I did, yeah, and I was uh, just quickly uh, glancing over the article again and uh, I think it's pretty fascinating, um, the fact that they can use kind of a uh, uh, you know, the brain waves and uh, blood uh, go into different parts of the brain to distinguish kind of what people are thinking is, uh, is pretty cool. Right. So, so locked in syndrome, um, as far as I'm understanding, it's basically someone who's uh, suffering from complete paralysis, right? But they have sort of preserved awareness, right? So they're paralyzed, but they, they can still think, uh, they can still make eye movements and, um, well, can- so, so that's where, um, Completely locked in syndrome. They don't even have eye movement. Yeah, still. completely locked in syndrome. They, 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 something's going on um, with their motor nerves, and they can't move their eyes as well. Yeah, so right, but, lo- but locked in syndrome, uh, they still do have the the use of their eyes, so they can at least use that as a response mechanism. Right, right. Yeah. So this is this is really interesting to me. Um, I, I mean, I'm sure you've listened to the show before, and I feel like every news story I say, yeah, this is really interesting, and I, I really never <laughs> have anything. Uh, no, but this one's cool. Um, this one to me signals, you know, we're one step closer to human brain interfaces uh, for other applications. Now, um, like, I, I don't know. I just I love the thought of being able to control something with your mind. Like, obviously, yeah. big big <laughs> Star Wars fan over here. Like, I, I think of the force. So, like, yeah. um yeah, no, I just I, I think it's cool. So uh, funny side story about that. I'm really into the Internet of Things and I uh, I have some things hooked up in my house and um, there's uh, like lights and the TV and whatnot. There's this Star Wars band uh, for for the that uh, robot from the new movie BB-8. Uh, there's a Star Wars band that you basically like do gestural controls and you can remote control him along the floor. Now. Mm. They have linked this to IFT, or, or uh, yeah, I think it was IFT, um, but they basically gave it Internet of Things connectivity, so you can do gestural nice. controls and control your Internet of Things stuff. So, like, uh, if I, you know, force push, I can turn on the lights or something like that. I haven't done it yet, but it's something I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so uh, what's up next here? We got, uh, as it's re- uh, part of its recurring Hack Day events, Netflix asked its product team to go crazy with experimenting on new technologies. One of these craziest, uh, one of the craziest things to come out of this event last week was Mindflix, a way to navigate and control Netflix using your mind by using a Muse headband. What do you think so, of this? 
it's <laughs> man, I don't know. It's uh, I, I think it's I think it's uh, a cool idea, but um, it, it reminds me of. Uh, have you ever seen that movie Idiocracy? Oh yes, I have. We are one step. This is one step closer. Oh, to we're that. we're already there uh, for for other reasons, but yeah, no, I I, I agree. This is this is it, humans being lazy, one hundred percent. Because because now you can't even you know you don't even have to move your arm to uh, control what you're watching on Netflix. Dude, I already I already don't have to do that. I I just talked to Alexa and she she turns the channel for me. All right, well you're you're one step ahead of me. I'm a little I'm still see, a little old school. I still have to turn on my Xbox. See though, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Talking though is still that intermediary step. Like this is right. just thinking it. Right. Also, yeah, no, it's uh, it is it is interesting. I think I think the application is uh is interesting. I think it'll kind of go um, see where it goes, you know. Also, I'm talking more about human brain inter- interfaces. It's almost like I put these show notes together in a meaningful way. I just wanted to point that out. It's, a, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's I know it just fits so well. All right, let's let's talk about this University of Michigan study. So, uh, you know, when astronauts go into space, uh, there's something happens to them, right? Like they come back with this crazy disease that are, that's a plot of a movie or something. I don't know. But what these, uh, what these researchers here at university of Michigan did was, uh, they took MRIs of these astronauts before and after space missions. What do you think they came back with? Well, you have the show notes right here. I'm going to tell you, uh, <laughs> astronauts brains compress and expand during space flight. Uh, and these findings could have applications for treating uh, you know other health conditions that affect brain function. Now, this is this is a pretty cool. Uh, oh, I, there I go again saying this is pretty cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna try for the rest of the podcast to not say that. All right. Okay. What do you think of this? No, it, it's. I think I think it's pretty interesting, honestly. Um, you know, it's it, it kind of makes you think about uh, you know possible uses for other kind of health applications. Um, you know, uh, people that have uh, you know. Uh, hem- or something like that where you need to actually decrease the size of the brain to help uh, relieve fluids or anything like that. I mean, you know, sort of medical uh, issues like that, you know, it could definitely help with some stuff like that. Right, yeah. No, this this uh, article is littered with great quotes. Um, trying to find one here. I should have. Oh, uh, the, the one I like is, uh, so it says it's interesting because even if you love something, you won't practice more than an hour a day, and that's... Uh, that was basically what he was talking about when it, um, how it, how it kind of changes the brain sometimes. Oh, um, yeah. They're they're talking about um, they're the, that's in response to uh, to their brain sort of reacting to microgravity, right? They are they're sort of um, figuring out how to control leg movement, uh, and right. they they found that there was you know a reduction in gray matter. Or, or sorry, an increase in, in gray matter, and that basically is to accommodate that they're they're learning how to reuse these appendages that on Earth they are completely using them in a different way. Uh, yeah, they, they say. Um, let's see here. This is this is my favorite quote. We found large regions of gray matter volume decreases, uh, which could be related to the redistribution. I can't talk. Which could be related to the redistribution of cerebrospinal fluid in space. So basically it's saying your brain isn't compressed in the same way that it is on Earth. And so, you know, it, it has more room to expand and grow. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, it ma- makes sense if you think about it. You know, with, with uh, gravity, it's um, if you have no gravity, your brain is not, uh, you know, getting pushed down, I guess. I don't know. So no, I agree. Pretty All right. interesting. All right. So we talked. Did we talk about MIT this week? Because I feel like we talk about MIT every week. But let's go ahead and break this one down. They have created a wearable system that can tell whether the person you're talking to is happy or sad. This device takes an existing research grade wearable Samsung Simban smart smartwatch. Have you have you heard of that one, Woodrow? Uh, the Simban? Yeah. Um, I haven't actually. I, I've I've been a little behind on my uh, my wearable tech lately, but. Yeah, I've not heard of this one either. Um, but this basically, could, this this smartwatch, this can measure movement, heart rate, blood pressure, blood flow, and skin temperature. Uh, and so this sounds like a fitness tracker with a couple extra bells and whistles to me. It also pairs with audio capture that can pick up signals like tone, pitch, energy, and word choice and provide a transcript of the text. 
Now this is interesting to me. Oh God, I did it again. All right, this is this is fascinating <laughs> to me because I know some humans. I know some humans who can't even pick up on social cues. You know, I'm I'm really <laughs> I'm really dubious about this thing, but I mean, you know, the technology seems promising. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it is uh, uh, something that I don't know. I'm uh, I, I'm a little torn on. I think. Um, I, I mean, I think the technology is is interesting. I think where they're going at um, could definitely help people, especially uh, people that maybe are a little more uh, uh, socially awkward or you know don't don't quite know how to to react in those situations. Uh, for someone like me, I probably wouldn't like it. Um, I don't want people knowing what I'm thinking when I'm talking to them <laughs> or knowing if I'm happy or sad. I don't know. It's it's uh, it'd be kind of it'd be kind of weird. So for me, this is less um, this is less about the human to human interaction and more about the human computer interaction to me. So I, when I think of this, I think of uh, I think of like Amazon coming up with this this system, and like it, they have a, 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 an always on listening device like Alexa in your home, and what they do is they they listen for the tone, the pitch, energy all that stuff that they talked about and then they pair it with your fitness tracker or whatever and they can tell how you're feeling and so like if you're sad or like uh upset or something like who knows maybe maybe alexa will order you a box of chocolates or something you know like i just i'm just thinking about that passive sort of system to where if if it can tell how you feel then it can sort of provide remedy for that, right? So, you know, you come home from a long day at work, you're stressed, and then Alexa can tell that you're stressed, and then, you know, you complain about cooking, and then it integrates the fact that you're stressed with cooking, and it orders you dinner, and it shows up on your doorstep, you know, by the time your tirade is over. Like, this is the kind of thing that I'm thinking of. Yeah, I don't know. That's, um... I mean, I'm sure that'd be great for some people. For me, I wouldn't necessarily like that. It's the house uh, of the future, man. It can pick up on your emotions and just remedy everything. Well, uh, only if the alg- only depending on how good the algorithm is, right? I mean, well, yeah. Uh, you know what? What some of this is talking about is like length of pauses um, can indicate you're talking about something sad or worrisome. I mean, that's not exactly true. You could be thinking. You could be contemplating you know and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's um you know you're you're upset or in a bad mood so that's true um, yeah it it does you know, it does kind of depend on that yeah so i think i think uh you know it's a good step uh i'm not convinced yet but uh let's see where it goes you know i'm sure there's going to be a lot more research out on on stuff like this though oh yeah someday for sure all right so woodrow are you on social media at all you're on linkedin uh, i'm on linkedin all right. Well, are you on Lego Life? <laughs> I am not, but uh, I, I, it, it sounds interesting. <laughs> so Lego Life is a social network built specifically for kids. It launched this week. Uh, the entire experience is contained within an app that's available on the App Store and on Google Play. And this is basically a place for kids to share their Lego designs uh, and, you know, kind of chat with each other and... Um, have their own little social network without it being Facebook and... and, and that kind of thing. You know, I, I really do love the title of it, though, which is How Lego Built a Social Network for Kids. That's right. not creepy. Right? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Though This this article that we pulled from Wired, the, yeah, their, uh, <laughs> their title is How Lego Built uh, uh, a Social Networking Site for Kids That is Not Creepy. I mean, uh, let's, let's visit that dark side of the internet for a second though. Like I wonder what their verification methods are to make sure you're a child that's, uh, you know, cause I mean, if you're, unless this is just a social network where you share your designs and you can't really chat with other people, I don't know. Cause I, yeah, I, I was, I was, re- I was reading over the article. So it looks like uh, to even sign up, you do have to actually put in a parent's email and then they have to go on and approve it. Um, so, you know, no one can just sign up and just automatically start. So it looks like there's a they, they started the process of kind of a two-step verification, I guess, if you want to call it. Well, um, yeah, but I mean, well, okay, yeah, you get it from the parents, but what's to stop that creepy person from from putting in a parent's uh, email and then and then saying, yes, I want on, and then talking to people? Like, is this 
talking to children. Is it, is this? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, there's always, I mean, no matter what, there's always going to be people like that and issues like that. I think they're, you know, they definitely are going about it right way. I mean, I think, um, what they said, they randomly assign, um, once you get on, they randomly assign you, uh, um, uh, usernames and everything. Uh, so people can't, uh, detect you or something like that oh, okay so it's it's kind of it's yeah it sounds like it's just for sharing designs yeah. um but i mean what's to stop people from creating a lego dick and putting it up there you know like that's <laughs> <laughs> i mean and children are gonna i don't know i still i still think people are gonna find a way to make this thing creepy um but yeah, i think uh, i think i think it's a it's a good concept uh it needs some work, probably, and you know, yeah. unfortunately, the way social media. See, I, I'm probably a bad person to talk to about because I, I, I'm not a fan of social media. Um, but I, I do know that you know earlier, the earlier they, you know, you can get kids into this. Uh, you know, it could really help with, uh, with long term social interaction with kids. You know, so. Yeah, well, you can find me posting uh, dick Legos on uh, Lego Life this weekend. Uh, Fox Sports, did you watch this uh, thing this weekend that everyone's talking about? That it's like a big bowl or something? It's like a big... Yeah, only, yeah big, it's just the big biggest dish. sports event in United States history. But Yeah, yeah that sports thing. Uh, yeah. So Fox last week announced that they are going to air the Super Bowl um, in virtual reality. This is cool. Uh, this is oh my gosh! I said this is cool again. All right, let's not say this is cool this time. Uh, well, because it's not. This no, is, this is terrible. This is a, a, a poor, poor execution <laughs> on their on their part. I mean, it's it's beyond Oof. sad. Yeah, it is. So it's a uh, virtual suite, basically, where you watch highlight clips from the game in a near real time. So basically, you're sitting in this room, and you got a big screen in front of you. It's not even like you're in virtual reality on the field. This is just a, a it, it looks like a trophy room or something. And, you know, it's it's not in 360 degree video. You're just looking at a big screen. but And it's not, and it's not in real time. So you're not actually watching the game. It's just... It's highlights, highlights. yeah, yeah. You, you can watch that on ESPN, or you know, it's. I I think, I think they should have put this off till next year when they actually had the capability of, of actually streaming the game, in oh. 360. Oh, um, for sure, it will be around next year. I mean, you'll know that absolutely. there's going to be like several 360 degree camera feeds that you can switch to at any point. Uh, they'll as they'll start doing those spider cams, I'll bet you. Um, the next thing I'll, I'll bet is uh, making those spider cams, the ones that kind of fly over the fields. Oh, um, yeah. I, I think they'll make those 360. Um, you know, I, I don't know, because there's the whole deal with motion sickness. So, I, uh, so virtual reality works best when you can kind of reduce motion sickness and if people are in virtual reality watching a football game and then so they have to focus on the action and then they're flying overhead and there's movement in their periphery they're going to get really sick really quick so this is why i'm saying they're they'll probably set up like four different cameras at very you know like either either in zone um and maybe like a couple on the sidelines and then you'll be able to kind of look around and be able to switch to another feed um gotcha. Because, I mean, you know, if you just point and say, I want to look at that feed, boom, and then you kind of teleport, it's not as jarring. Um, yeah. We, we kind of talked about this on our uh, PlayStation VR episode where uh, Batman Arkham VR kind of does this type of deal. And that's what I'm thinking for, for future uh, Super Bowl games. Did you, uh, did, you, did you like the game? Were you a fan or of anything? Oh, I don't know how was, sports it work. Is, it was probably one of the best Super Bowls of all time. Oh, yeah? Uh, Oh yeah, absolutely. I is that because Lady Gaga's up there dancing with drones and and that uh, was no, that was terrible. But you you didn't know. like that part? No. That was my favorite part. I loved Lady Gaga. And of course, of course, that was your favorite part. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yep. All right. So <laughs> all right. Let's. Uh, all right. So <laughs> speaking of PlayStation VR, uh, PlayStation. Four's next big software update is going to uh, it's going out now to beta testers. I have it. Uh, it adds a lot for PlayStation owners uh, for us to get excited about. So mainly, it improves the user experience by uh, supporting external USB hard disk drives, which means 
regardless of how much internal storage you have on your PS4, you can add up to eight tetrabytes of additional space via external drives. This is wonderful news, um, especially for us who, who keep filling up our PlayStation. Are you a PlayStation guy or are you an Xbox guy? I am not. I'm a Xbox guy, but I'm actually a, a recent convert to a uh, PC. So it's... See, I was a big PC gamer once, uh, and then, you know, the flow, uh, I, I got into grad school, and then the flow of keeping up with upgrading, it just became way too expensive and pricey for a grad student. So maybe now I'll get back into it, but, uh, you know, I, this, is, this is great news for console gamers because, yeah. like, we, I think my, uh, my PlayStation's only 500 gigabytes or something like that, and so to be able to... With, s- with these new, yeah, with these new games coming out too i mean there's they they take up a lot of space i mean oh yeah I mean, you know there's some games that are, that are probably close to you know uh 100 gigabytes alone oh yeah no it's yeah. it's crazy like even even some of the uh playstation 4 pro patches that add like additional assets so uh higher resolution skins um, everything like that it adds a ton to it and so to add this more space is great in addition um, we were talking about PlayStation VR just a second ago, but basically they're adding the functionality for those who have PlayStation VR to watch 3D Blu-rays on the PlayStation, which is cool because you don't need a 3D TV. Nice. Um, yeah, so uh, this, is, this is also not nice because I've been putting off buying the 3D Blu-ray edition of Star Wars The Force Awakens because I don't have a 3D TV, and now, now I'm going to have to buy it. <laughs> Yeah, I you know I've, I haven't really I don't have a 3D TV either. Um, I've watched one, a couple movies and um, I think my I'm just not used to it yet. But the ones I have seen, like I mean, I get a headache. Um, it's just it's a lot of information. It's a lot of processing. Yeah, it is. I I'm typically not a fan of uh, 3D movies, but I mean, you know, now I, I, who knows how it's done in VR, right? Because in VR, it's they're producing that image by the eye, and it, it won't look like all tinted and, um, you know, dark. It'll it'll look vibrant, but it'll still be eye to eye. It'll be interesting to see for sure. Um, yep, absolutely. All right, so this next one, I'm curious as to what you think about. Uh, I'm curious as to other things of what what you think about. But speaking of VR. The uh, Nintendo president explained this week that the company will add virtual reality support to the Nintendo Switch console if it can resolve issues of comfort over long periods of use. Basically, he's saying, you know, if, if, we, if we can get people to sit there and do virtual reality over a long period of time without getting sick, without getting tired, without feeling dis- uncomfortable, then we'll do it. Have you seen the Nintendo Switch? Uh, I have not too much um just recently and uh I, I don't know what to think about it yet um you know I'm, i I'm, i haven't been a nintendo guy for a long time so i'm um, kind of out of the whole wii wii and uh and nintendo ds kind of stuff um but i feel like they're going in a good direction at least from kind of uh, this really does support uh multiple uh ways of playing which i think is is definitely going to be kind of the future season uh, you know, so, so I went on sort of a rant a couple weeks ago when they announced this thing. I was like, oh, this thing is not going to do well. It's an ergonomic nightmare. And I was really excited to get you on the show just to hear what you thought from the ergonomics perspective. What do you think of all these parts moving around and, and how it sits in the dock and all that stuff? Uh, it's not the best. Um, again, I think, I think the, the concept is good and the, the execution just might, might not be there yet. Um, you know, obviously there's, there's some issues with, uh, you know, you can't charge it when it's, when it's docked, you can't, um, you know, you can't view the screen when it's docked. Uh, there's some things that I think they definitely need to work out, but I, I, you know, uh, like the president said, I mean, there are those issues that they need to work out. So I think once they do, uh, kind of address some of that stuff, um, it could be, it could be something, uh, really to, uh, to push the market. Yeah, I, I'll be interesting to see how it performs. Um, I mentioned on the show, Human Factors Cast is trying to get an advanced copy to review, um, and we definitely include you in on that review as the ergonomic guru. Uh, so, all right, let's get into some weird news. So, New York Attorney General 
Eric Schneiderman filed a lawsuit accusing uh, charter subsidiary Spectrum of lying to customers about internet speeds it advertised and the reliability of its network. So this lawsuit uh, was filed in the state Supreme Court in Manhattan, and it accuses Spectrum of defrauding customers since 2012 by charging them for services it knew it could not provide. So Woodrow, I have to ask, are you going to call up your internet service provider and complain tonight about your internet speeds that they're charging you for that they said that they would give you? Uh, you know, I probably won't, even though I do have a uh, uh, Time Warner. Um, oh, you have spec- Time Warner. Yeah, I do. Um, it, you know, am I happy with them? Not exactly. Do I get the speeds that I was asked for or, you know, that I signed up for? Pretty close. Um, you know, I've got my computer... My computer's probably, uh, I would say about 25, 30 feet away, and I've got a pretty good uh, uh, Wi-Fi card. Um, and I'm hitting about 90%, 80, 80 to 90% of, uh, of what, I'm, you know, what, I, what I'm supposed to get uh, if I was hardwired. So, oh, man, so it's got, not bad. Um, you got to plug directly but, in, man. That's, that's the best way, especially if you're a PC gamer now. Well, it's, I, I understand, but... It wouldn't work right now because you'd have to go across a couple um, doorways and stuff. So. Well, you just got a new house, so uh, hopefully then you'll place the uh, everything in a place that makes sense. I mean, you are you are a human factor. Oh, it'll be ho- oh, it'll be hooked up. Yeah. It'll <laughs> oh be yeah, up. man. About that. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have a house party, housewarming party over at Woodrow's Human Factors Cast housewarming party. Uh, we'll we'll bring <laughs> we'll bring the Nintendo Switch. We'll just have no, a little time. You know, I. I hope this uh, this goes through because I would love to see uh, some money coming my way on a class action, man. That'd be that'd be kind of nice. But, yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I just think this will this will keep pushing uh, Google Fiber to really kind of expand its balance. Oh, I can't wait! Going. I can't wait! Oh, when are they going to bring that back? And I don't know uh, why why they started in Provo. Uh, it just blows my mind. But you know, I had a buddy living near Provo, and he was really upset that he didn't. Like it, it, it was it was only in Provo, and it you know yeah. didn't come to his town, and so he was literally five miles outside the Provo border. I was only yeah, I was maybe ten miles. I lived about ten, maybe fifteen miles from Provo. Oh wow! Uh, in in, Utah, in Salt Lake, and uh, yeah, we still couldn't get it. Didn't it one go, day. Didn't it come to Chattanooga, Tennessee, at one point too? Probably. I mean, if they started in Provo, why not, right? Well, Chattanooga's been been blowing up for. Uh, for business, uh, for tech business, so I'm well, maybe that's, maybe okay. that's why. Yeah, maybe. Well, we'll see. All right, hey Woodrow, question for you, buddy. Have you yes. ever gone into a parking lot and uh, seen some jerkwad just park over parking spots and are like, y- why? Left, left messages or have you ever left passive aggressive or just aggressive messages on somebody's car about being a jerk for parking? Um, I will neither confirm nor deny. That's not like they're going to listen to this. All right. Uh, well, <laughs> what if yeah, I have? Because it, it honestly, like, I don't care how nice of a car you have. Uh, don't be a jerk. No, I agree. So, what if instead of giving them a passive aggressive uh, note, you can give them a parking ticket? That's exactly what this CPM UK Park Management app wants to do. It wants to get people to report badly or incorrectly parked cars uh through a dedicated smartphone app drivers whose vehicles are, that are deemed to be in breach of the rules will be issued a fine while the person who uh who basically called them out will earn 12 bucks so it's it's you get 12 bucks and they get fined anywhere from 75 to 125 dollars depending on how long it takes them to pay their bill i think this is sweet sweet justice and uh <laughs> hopefully i mean it's 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 in the UK, right? So, I mean, we're not going to see it here in the States. I wish I would have thought about this. This is an awesome app. I love it. This is incredible. And uh, honestly, if it ever comes to the U.S., I will probably get a second job just doing this. Dude, I'm, yeah. Go. So, And it's, com- it's, it's totally easy to verify, too. Like, you just snap a picture and upload it, and there are license yeah. plates right there. It's brilliant. Oh, yeah. It's, no, it's brilliant. Uh, I feel like uh, this could definitely 
uh, pick up here, and especially in California, man. I'm telling you, California drivers are seriously some of the worst. Now, if only you could report people on the road and and submit video, then you know, you know, one thing I wish actually, which would be a great spinoff of this, are the people that use the um, uh, the HOV lanes. Uh, oh when yeah, when they don't have somebody, and they always use it by our work. Um, to get on and off the freeway because the, those exits and entrances are never used on for the 805. Oh, and I'm yeah. telling you, man, a cop would rake in the money if they just sat there and watched all the people that break that law. Or, or even if they just had cameras that like right. were forward facing and they could just catch the the passenger seat. Yeah, there's. So when I went to Arizona, um, I was warned that there are tons and tons and tons of traffic lights and speeding lights and just mm. lights that will ding you nickel and dime you if you are not behaving on the road. And so Arizona is supposed to be a, a place for really good drivers. And so when I, when I visited a couple months ago, um, you know, I, I didn't see any. And so I'm, I'm wondering if like, the uh, the population said no, we don't like this, and they they voted them out or what. But apparently they were a big thing at one time. So yeah, keep it going, man. Help, yeah, you know, I yeah. agree. I agree. I think it's a great clean thing. Clean up the streets. <laughs> clean up them streets. <laughs> All right. So let's switch gears a little bit and play a game. This is going to be a little bit tough on you, Woodrow, because you're all by yourself. But we're going to play Human Factors 20 Questions. Now, this is a game where Woodrow is going to have to guess a Human Factors person, place, thing, concept. It could be whatever, as long as it relates to Human Factors. Um, And you you get 20 questions, uh, and these are yes or no. And we source this week's topic from one of our listeners, Chance. Thank you for writing in for this week's topic. Woodrow, what do you got for me? Oh, I really should have prepped for this. Um, well, in the notes it says, do not prep questions. This is to be done on the show. <laughs> well, there you go then. Um, oh, I can't see. Oh, it's, it's highlighted. Can't see. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah it's in, it's in there you go. Text. There you go. Ah, there you <laughs> go. Um, all right. So my first question then, uh, is it a person? It is not a person. Um, really quick. So I gave... I gave uh, Blake and Billy this hint um, a couple weeks ago when we first started playing. I want to give it to you before we get into it, really. But uh, when you ask, try to be, you know, try try not to narrow it down. So so, I guess I, I'll I'll, I'll try to catch you if I if I kind of feel like you're doing it because uh, basically what that does like don't say is it specifically related to this right because I mean a lot of things in human factors can be can span a lot of different topics so person is fine I can definitively say it is not a person but if you were to ask about a concept or or, or something specific like is it is it specifically I forget how Blake was saying it he said is it specifically related to this uh, or, or like he asked a question is it used primarily or is it used in the military and my or is it used only in the military or something like that and you know it's not used only in the military but it was spanning so so just be careful with how you answer your questions all right so i want to hear what else you got so it's not a person not a person uh is it a theory uh it i can't answer that (laughs) <laughs> Come on, how, how can you not answer that? You don't get, that doesn't count against you. Um, it's, <laughs> I mean, I guess it, refine your question. Uh, all right, well, is it a concept? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see, is it, uh, uh, is it in the field of psychology versus engineering? I would say, ooh, these are yes/no questions. Uh, yes, it's in the, it's it's primarily in the field of psychology. Yes. Um. All right. So it's concept. It's not a person. It's psychology. Um. All right. Does it? Does it have to do uh, with uh, tactile? That's a good one. Uh, no. No tactile. Okay. All right. How about auditory? 
No. That's five. I'm keeping track. Don't worry. I'm writing it down. <laughs> you got it, too. Oh, I got a pen and paper, man. Uh, all right, visual? No. Hmm. Okay. Uh, does it have... Okay, is it related to uh, information processing? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my old grad school professor is going to kill me if I don't get this. He studied <laughs> so hard on this. Um, okay, so uh, information processing. Um, does it have to do with one of the stages of information processing? Uh, specifically or... Like, okay, so let me, let me refine that. Is it, does it have to do with perception? Yes. Okay, all right, man. So it's a concept in psychology about perception and information processing. Hmm. Dang, this is tough. It's, it's one tough. person, man. It's I know, I know. I wish you had other people to bounce <laughs> off of. No worries, no worries. Um, all right. I still got quite a few questions here. Um, yeah, you do. All right, perception, huh? Um, let's see. If, if you don't get it by 15, I'll give you another hint. Okay. Are there... Let's see, concepts. Are there times associated with this concept? Are there, uh, like, uh, like, milliseconds? Like, reaction time? No. Is reaction time part of this? No. You're at nine. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, what do you think? What do you think? What are you thinking it could be? Um, so I'm actually kind of thinking of um, uh, uh, Fitz Law. Is it Fitz Law? It is not Fitz Law. That's ten. Let's see. I'm trying to think back to my. Does it have to do with working memory? Uh, yes, and kind of no. I can't answer that. <laughs> That's a freebie. That's a freebie. <laughs> yes and no. Okay. That's good. Is it, um, oh, is it, uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to start guessing because I have a few ideas. Um, is it the, uh, oh god, what's the name of it? Um, I can't remember the actual name, and people are going to kill me for this. Uh, is it, uh, your memory span that's 7 plus or minus 2? No. That's 11. That's, oh, that's right, you gave me that one. Okay. Okay, oh man. Let's see. So if working memory might be involved. Uh, is long-term memory involved? Uh, yeah, I can't answer that question. <laughs> That's another freebie. <laughs> these, are, these are the ones that are, like, uh, a little nebulous because if you have any psychological construct um, or concept, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, those things are involved, but they're not directly involved you know you just got to be careful about how you ask those questions gotcha. so i'll give them to you for free hmm. what else are you thinking um i'm thinking of uh what's this oh my god oh man i'm like uh failing under pressure here um i'm okay, thinking man. of uh, uh the information processing model uh What's his name? Um, uh, I mean, just a huge guy in the field. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Wickens. Wickens uh, information processing model. You know, I, I, I'll give you this hint now. I, I think that question kind of fell into the, like, nebulous category where, like, yes, it has to do with it, but it's not specifically... So... I don't know if that helps you or not. I'm trying not to give too many hints, but I also don't want to make it too hard for you because we didn't have the, the the guys so far are zero for one on this one. So. 
Um, all right, so... And we got listener feedback last week about how it was too hard. <laughs> so. Well, it's hard It's hard thinking on the spot, though, I mean, because there's so many theories and so many things. Right, well, at least you know it has uh, to do with he- human factors, right? Well, yeah, but <laughs> there's still a lot within human factors. All right, uh, let's see. So, um, let's see. How about... Yeah, I'm kind of running out of... Uh, questions here um, is it a uh, I know you said it's a concept uh, is there a task that can test this concept um no no not that I know of but I I don't think so and I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure on that one so is it a theoretical concept yes Okay. That's 13. Yep. Got seven questions. Okay. So so what are you thinking? What are you thinking right now? Uh, I'm trying to think of these, uh, the graphs that, um, that show the, um, now it should be noted that you are you are not like referencing anything right now. You are you are manifesting these questions and this uh, these this sort of thought process is happening without any any reference. Yeah, right. no, you, that's you, why it's taking so long. Otherwise, are, I would have guessed it like uh, in the first like eight questions. Man, you are doing this hard mode here. This is. Um. Theoretical concept. So, man, I'm trying to think, think of some of the things that I learned, but it's been so many years. Uh, all those different ones. Um, is the uh, is the person that came up with this theoretical concept still alive? Um, let's see. Mm, I'm on the wiki page right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, I don't want to tell you when they were born. Uh, no, you don't need to tell me that. Just are they alive? No, I know. I'm looking for it now. I don't know. It doesn't say anything. Um. Jeez. Uh. I am unsure. Um, okay. I'm, looking, it, I'm looking. Is it was it only one person? Uh, let's see. So that that one was a freebie. No, it was no, it was more than one person. Okay. That's fourteen. Are there books specifically written about this? I'm sure there are. Um, let me do a quick Amazon search. I'm I'm like ninety five percent positive that there's I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say yes and I will let you okay. know if that changes as a uh, oh yep no for sure for sure there are there is oh yes all right we hit fifteen I'll give you another hint here okay. um, since you brought up books when I search it in Amazon um, there are let's see. 1,462 results when I put in that the search, search term. term? Mm-hmm. Jesus. Um, well, that's a lot. So I'm thinking, well, I mean, I already kind of said it, but maybe I didn't say it specific enough. Is it... Oh, I don't want to waste a guess, but... It's really similar to a question I asked before, so I don't know if I want to waste a guess on it, but... Yeah, screw it. I'm running out of time. Um, is it human information processing? No. Uh, 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 does it does it have to do with uh, feedback? Um, no, not not the concept itself. No. Okay. Um. So one other thing, <laughs> since we did get that feedback from from the listener that that said this is too hard for Billy and Blake. <laughs> I tried to make it really easy this week, and man, you're still having <laughs> trouble with it. 
Well, you know, when you look at something, it's of course easy, but then when you have to think about it, all oh, everything in this entire field. Um, oh, I feel like I'm close, but I just don't. Um, I, dude, chance is going to be heartbroken if you don't if you don't get this. That's it. Oh, what's? Uh, hold on one sec. Let me write this. He up. wrote in and he said, "This should be easy enough for the guys to solve." <laughs> does it? Does it have to do? Or does it relate to anything involving mental models? Yes. Oh, damn it. So what are you thinking now? So you just found out I, that it... it I'm, re- I'm thinking human performance modeling, but I know that's not it. I don't know why it's coming to mind. Um, uh, mental models. Oh, my goodness. Let's see here. Let me go with my notes. Oh, man. This is tough. Uh... You're almost there. You are almost uh, there. Yeah. You have two questions left. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, I just have no idea. Um, so, wait, wait. Sorry, what was your last question? You asked about mental models? Yeah. What was your question? Uh, does it relate to, to mental models? Yes, yeah. Okay, sorry. I just want to make sure I answered that correctly. I don't know. Can you give me one more hint, and I'll, I'll 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 take a question off for a hint. How about that? Okay, okay. For a hint, so your nineteenth question. You are very close. <laughs> like, very close. What is mental modeling? Is that your question, or is that is? Oh, oh, sorry. No, <laughs> this is not Jeopardy. I thought this was like Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> is mental modeling in the name? This is your twentieth question because you took one off for the. Uh... I know, I know. Okay, yes, it's mental modeling. I'm going to give it is to me- you. <laughs> yeah, mental modeling. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> you got it. That was, uh, oh. How how was that? That was tough, man. It's it's. Uh, I don't know. Like it was a lot tougher than I thought. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's tough because you didn't have you didn't have the guys backing you up here. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it could have been easier uh, if you had your ideas to bounce around with somebody today. Right. But yeah, absolutely. But uh, but yeah, I even anyway. wrote it, I even wrote it down on the bottom of the page. I have mental model. The <laughs> of the page. You got it. For all intents and purposes, you got it. That was your seventeenth question, and you were so close. I just counted it. Well, that's going to be it for today, everyone. If uh, you want to be featured on the show like Chance today, go ahead and uh, send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. You can send us suggestions for games, topics, news stories that you want us to cover. You can follow us on social media. Head on over to the Human Factors Cast Facebook site. Comment on our SoundCloud. We're at H Factors Podcast on Twitter. Uh, like I said, you can send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 901-646-1432. That's 901-646-1HFC. You can also support us on our Patreon site at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. Be sure to like, subscribe, review us on iTunes, the Google Play Store, SoundCloud, or whatever your favorite podcast directory is. I want to thank my panel of one... <laughs> for, be- <laughs> for being on the show today Woodrow where can our listeners find you uh, you can find me on LinkedIn alright as for me I've been your host Nick Rome you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Nick underscore Rome thanks again for tuning in to Hidden Factors Cast until next time it depends, it depends. Say- yeah it depends it depends <laughs> <laughs>